Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to perform a joint code check in the RAM frame steel post processor according to the AISC 360 specification. Now in RAM frame, you can perform a joint code check on rigid steel joints after the lateral analysis is performed. The joint code check will evaluate the lateral steel column to see if the flanges and web are capable of resisting the shear and concentrated forces that are imposed upon the joint from the framing beams. If a lateral steel column is found inadequate to resist the imposed load, a web plate or transverse stiffeners will be designed according to the AISC Design Guide 13. We will now turn our attention to our sample model in the RAM frame steel post processor. Now before we go ahead and perform a joint code check, let's take an opportunity to review our sample model. Now for this building, steel moment frames are resisting the lateral loads in the global X direction. All of the steel beam column joints in the moment frames were modeled considering the valid joint requirements in RAM frame. Now in RAM frame, a valid joint or a joint that is a candidate for having a joint code check performed on it is defined by one in which the column is an I section and where at least one steel member is rigidly connected to the flange of the column. In addition to that, it's also important to understand that the diaphragm assignments can affect the forces that your joints will be seeing and will be used during a joint code check. For this building, the roof deck is acting as a pseudo-flexible diaphragm, and the third floor is acting as a semi-rigid diaphragm, both of which are already specified in the RAM frame analysis criteria. Now, why is that important? Well, in a semi-rigid diaphragm, RAM frame will distribute the lateral loads to the vertical lateral force resisting system through the diaphragm mesh nodes, resulting in axial load in the lateral steel beams. And of course, this will affect the loads that the joints will see. Now, in contrast to that, in rigid diaphragm approach, RAM frame will distribute the lateral loads to the vertical lateral force resisting system through the nodes that are connected to the diaphragm. Now this could affect whether or not the lateral steel beams will be seeing any axial load. Now that we've reviewed our sample model, let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I want to do is to specify my joint criteria. To do that, I'm gonna go up to my main menu, select criteria, followed by joints. Now within the joint criteria dialog, we'll be able to see all of the material properties and information that will be used in order to design or optimize any column reinforcement that may be required during the analysis. Now go ahead and click on the design tab in this dialog. Now during the RAM frame joint code check, the forces applied at the beam column connection can be determined from either using the design forces or from the bending capacity of the members at the joint. Now for this model, we will ask RAM frame to consider the design forces in the joint code check, including the axial load in the beams. Now when the design forces are selected, the program will determine the largest panel zone shear as well as the largest concentrated force at each beam flange from all load combinations, considering the lateral beam reactions. Once you're done specifying your joint criteria, go ahead and click OK. We are now ready to perform a joint code check. To start that process, go to the main menu, select process followed by joint code check. Now what we're gonna notice is that RAM frame will provide a symbol at each of the column joints to indicate the status of the joint design, including any joints that may fail or require additional reinforcement. For this particular model, I can see that two of my moment frame joints are currently requiring transverse stiffeners. To gain more information on 
those particular joints, I can use my view update command. To start that, go to your main menu, select process, followed by joint view update. Once I select this command, you're going to notice that your cursor is going to change, which will allow you to select any of the joints in your model. I'm going to go ahead and click on this joint, which is currently recommending stiffeners. Now within the joint web plates and stiffeners dialog, I'm going to notice that some stiffeners were recommended for both the top and the bottom. I'm also going to notice that the existing column size and yield strength are also reported. Now at this point, let's go ahead and click on the view results button to review the calculations. Within the joint code check report, we'll be able to see all of the design checks that were performed and where reinforcement is being recommended. The first check that will be performed during a joint code check is the panel zone check. Here within this section of the report, we'll be able to see the actual forces that are being imposed on this particular joint, along with the column capacity without a web plate. Now, if the column capacity was less than the controlling shear force, we would be recommending a web plate. But as you can see for this particular joint, that is not the case. Once the panel zone check is complete, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the other checks for the model, including local web yielding, web crippling, and web buckling. Now here from this report, I can see that the bottom flange for local web yielding and compression is requiring some stiffness. And in addition to that, I could see that the tension areas for the top flange are also requiring some transverse stiffeners. Now that being said, let's go ahead and close out of the joint code check dialog. Now web plates and transverse stiffeners may have an adverse economic impact on a project, which might include additional labor costs and more complicated weak axis connection details. Now you as the engineer can make the judgment of whether or not you would like to stick with the column size that is initially assigned here and detail the joint accordingly with the required reinforcement, or perhaps investigate an alternate column size to avoid reinforcing your joint. For me, for this particular model, I'm going to go ahead and choose to investigate alternate column sizes to see if I can get away from that reinforcement, if at all possible. Now I can do that directly within this dialog. Here I can see I can alter the column size and investigate the results. So I can go ahead and try different column sizes. Anytime you select a different one, you can click on the Analyze button, and then we'll be able to see here if you've selected a size that would not require any additional reinforcement. And I would typically do this until I got to where I wanted to go. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and try a W12 by 72. Now with that column size under the current analysis, I would see that web plates and transfer stiffeners would no longer be required. And that's not a lot larger than the initial size I had selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose to increase the size of this column and my other column to a W12 by 72. Now, if I like the results of the alternate size, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Update Database button, and now this size will be officially assigned. When I do that, however, you're gonna notice that the indicator light in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen is now yellow, which basically indicates that this lateral analysis that was performed is not current. And the reason for that is because I changed the model after the analysis was performed. Before I re-perform the lateral analysis, I'm gonna change the other column sizes that are currently requiring joint reinforcement. So let's go ahead and close out of this dialog, and I'm going to upsize this column and this column. To do that, I can click on the Assign option in the main menu, go to Columns, and then Size. I'm going to select a W12 by 72. Click on the single button, and then I can change the column sizes I want. Now at this point, 
I need to go back and reperform the lateral analysis. So let's go ahead and do that before we wrap this up. To reperform the lateral analysis, I'm going to return to the RAM frame analysis mode. I'm going to go and click on the perform analysis icon, ensure all of the lateral load cases are still selected, and then click OK. After the analysis is complete, proceed on to the steel post processor where you're going to want to reperform your member code check and your joint code check. After the member code check is performed, we will proceed on to the joint code check. After performing the new joint code check, we'll be able to see that all of our moment frame columns will be able to resist any of the forces acting through the panel zone or on the column flanges or webs without requiring any reinforcement. At this point, this concludes our process for performing a joint code check in the RAM frame steel post processor according to the AISC 360 specification. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.